This time on Genevision, we go all LGR. Let's love the lazy games of your channel and do check that out um, for lots of PC stuff and kind of stuff we didn't get in the UK. Of course, PC gaming wasn't a huge thing over here until the mid 90s when the SC and Amiga had died off. And then most gamers went to consoles, I say most, um, the lower end stuff. And then a lot of people spent thousands of pounds on PCs to play things like Doom. But um, if it was earlier than 94, um, generally speaking, the gamers had Amigas or STs or other things, and they might play games on their dad's flashy PC. And you might want to play some of those games today, but those PCs are quite large. So what you could get is a laptop. And I've been searching for one for Chini Vision for emulation purposes, because I was getting a bit sick of dragging out the Amstrad PC 2000, which is quite slow as well, to review games. And I found this Sharp on eBay for about £30. Um, it's from 1993. It's a Sharp PC... 2700, let's get it out and I'll tell you what it is. It's weird because it's got that soft touch finish on it, um, but um, it hasn't quite disintegrated in the way they usually do, so it's just slightly tacky. Um, and as you can see, it's had a hard life, but it's a metal case. Um, it's been soft touch, touch coated. It is in fact a PC6781 with a 386 processor and a, a RAM expansion in the uh, bay in the bottom there, but no mass co-processor. It is an SX. Actually, it's an SL processor, which was the first mobile chip that uh, Intel produced. So it's a mobile 386 um, chip. Um, battery compartment in there. Won't undo that. Um, and you've got a floppy disk drive around the side there, if you can see that there. Half height, little proprietary connector there. PCMCIA there. Voltage connector at the back. 12.9 volts, expansion bus there. I won't undo that. An external battery there. You don't need those. However, here's the interesting bit. It's the... <laughs> there you go. If you can see that. That is um, VGA out, parallel, serial, and some dip switches that let you select between CRT and LCD. And that's the important bit. Instead, if you do buy a battery, uh, laptop, get the batteries out because uh, obviously they will have turned to rot in the intervening years, and this thing had NICADs in it, which I've tried to replace, but more on that later. Let's open them up. And yeah, there's a bit of wobble on there. A uh, previous owner of this uh, worked for BA. I know this because it says so on the bottom and in all the software that's installed on here. Um, registered, we'll see that in a bit. A little bit of a wobble on there. It's been well used over the years. Uh, You've got a little mouse ball thing there that works really, really well, and your other buttons are there, which works quite nice. Um, suspend and to disc button there. Keyboard's quite good. Um, similar kind of thing you'd expect for keyboards of the era, really. And you can see the spec here, i386TM SL 20 megahertz with an 80 megabyte hard disk and a micro trackball. Got PCM CIA, which was the new standard for when this came out in 92, 93. Sophisticated power management. Sophisticated for the day and a paper white VGA display. Uh, display. Of course, this, this isn't color. Um, color was very, very expensive and very, very rare at the time. On a laptop, most people had black and white displays or amber displays or something like that. Um, and even then, this thing would have cost, in, in today's money, about three, three and a half thousand pounds, something like that, allowing for inflation. I've got some buttons here to adjust your brightness and contrast and a button there to turn the display on or off. Say you were, it was processing something you wanted to save some. Um, I'm lying. I am completely lying. That, it flips the display from black, uh, from black on white to white on black. I'm sorry. Just a few weeks since I had this on. Yeah, that flips it from black and white to white and black. So if you can't see something on the screen and then you can just, if you want to save battery life, you can actually just turn those down there. Um, battery life, got absolutely no idea, I'm afraid. Um, it won't be good though, it is an ICADS. Um, I have been doing work on this laptop, which I'll show you the battery pack underneath, um, which is here. If I can get in there. And you can see 
there it is there i just i'm not gonna take that out all the way that in fact i've tried to repair it and build a new battery pack but um failed it doesn't want to work but it is just a capsule with one two three four five six NICADs in there coming up to 12 uh 12.7 7.2 volts sorry um 1800 milliamps um and you can get those batteries easily it's dead easy to rebuild but as i say this one is not playing ball with me at the moment and that locks up like yay and on the top they've got a power light and a battery light as well now this is old hardware that i don't know an awful lot about um, it's not my area of expertise um, so if i'm getting things wrong i apologize um, better to admit it than just make stuff up as you go along um, I've tried to repair this laptop and the battery and it wasn't working fine and now I have problems with it turning on. You press the on button, it comes on for a few seconds and goes off again. Now if I sit here and cycle this for a while, the entire thing will come on. It makes no difference to set the battery pack in or out. It is just, I should have done this video before I fiddled with it. When will I ever learn? It's that portable mega drive all over again where I took it apart before I did the review. So I'm gonna sit here and fiddle with this thing until it decides it wants to actually turn on. It's not the power supply because I've it's way over spec for oh, here we go. Are you booting? Please boot. Yay! <laughs> Just two minutes of messing around, it's lost its config. Great. Um invalid configuration. Please run setup. I've run set up. Press the F1 key to continue. Press 2 to... Let's get you in close. Here we go. I'm going to get you in on the screen. But you can hear it's quite quiet considering um, I've been working on a modern laptop for my dad. I'm installing a new version of Windows on it and that thing was like a small aircraft in the room. This is 1992. This has got a nice... It's not silent, but it's got a nice kind of sound to it. So let's get, let's get you in on the screen so you can see what's going on and then we'll capture some of the VGA out. Right, that's probably the best you're gonna get. I mean, the thing is, it's a 1992 mono display. It doesn't have the best um, angles available on it. It's not the brightest. Um, it's what was considered acceptable back in the day. And of course, if it's not a black and white screen to begin with, and this will be a colored image in there on the BIOS, um, you're gonna get weird kind of combinations on this. So we're going to review all our settings. Memory size was invalid. Review base and extended memory settings. Hit any key. I won't make the joke. So here we go. It has, however, remembered the date and time, which is very interesting. It is indeed about 1.30 on the 25th of May. I've not had this laptop on for about a month. I last had it on to do some capture for North and South. Um, but it forgotten its memory config. So clearly the BIOS can remember, has remembered certain things because the NICADs are in there, but it refuses to boot from the NICADs and it's forgetting its memory settings. I can't remember how much memory this thing has. I think it has one meg by default and then uh, possibly three meg, taking it up to four meg in the BIOS. See, it knows its hard disk. When I got this, it didn't know its hard disk, it didn't know its CPU speed, it knew nothing. And yet, since I put the NICADs in, it seems to remember everything apart from the memory size. Well, I think it's 3076. I could be wrong there. I probably am. Someone's probably screaming at the video right now and hitting downvote. Um, F4, let's try that. See if it works. Tests, then. No, it says it's got 55312. That's interesting. It's five, that's a lot of memory for a, a computer with 5312, right. Right, so this time I just rebooted again because I, I was wrong. It's it entered the memory incorrectly there and then wants me to save it. It's found it itself. So we've got six meg in a 1992 laptop. Somebody at British Airways was uh, had money to spend. Press F4. Yay, there we go. We are working. 
And what I'm going to do for shortly is go over to the color screen, color output. I'm going to show you what Windows looks like in black and white. Because this would be fun watching this on your big HD TV. Trying to watch uh, <laughs> this display. And I'm using the mouse there, and it's really nice. And you can see the level of blurring on there. It's not great. You move the mouse too fast, it disappears. I've lost the mouse now because I'm standing at an angle. So you move the mouse really fast, it just disappears. The refresh rate on it isn't great because it's a 1992 LCD. Um, what, what do you expect? Um, but what I have noticed, I wonder if it still does this party trick. If I pull the power supply out, Yep, power supply's out. It will not boot off my battery pack, but it will continue running off my battery pack. Can someone explain that to me, please? This unit does have a built-in speaker as well, which you can just hear there, but it's not very loud and there's no volume control. So the black and white screen's quite okay, acceptable on the static images, but it doesn't work too well on moving images. Uh, Indy 500 is kind of okay, there's a bit of blurring, but it doesn't have the frame rate that bothers the LCD too much, but it, it's still struggling here. You could play this on a train, I suppose, um, but it's not great. But what we're gonna do is go over to the, as I say, the color VJ output, and you can have a look at what it actually is gonna look like through a monitor. So I have this PC plugged into my capture, and I'm booting up Windows 3, so you can see what this looks like um, running in color, because of course the screen is only black and white. And yes, the capture is a little bit degraded because of the various complications I have to do to get through capturing um, the VJ out of a, a PC as opposed to my more, my normal, uh, more accurate capture from 8 and 16-bit computers. But here we are. We are loaded up into Program Manager in Windows 3. Um, it's as you remember it. And I'd forgotten really because I hadn't used this for so many years just how clean this design is. Um, they haven't wiped anything off there here, although I have wiped off um, Visual Basic myself because I needed some space. But let's boot up Word. And the hard disk is clicking away. Um, Word 2.0B, registered to Colin Luffman at British Airways. Hello to Colin. Um, uh, did, did, did obviously try and do a little search for him. Um, looks like he might still be around. Um, probably some kind of developer or something for British Airways back in the early 1990s. And here we go. It's loaded up. Word 2. And oh, look, it doesn't have the ribbon. And isn't this much easier and more pleasant to use? Oh, if, if only Word was still like this. I'm not a Luddite. I just find... Yeah, it's got lots of lovely features in it these days, but I just find it... A little bit too much sometimes, a little bit overcomplicated when all you want to do is have a few simple things and, and basically, you know, write letters and the ribbon is so, some people like it, I find it a bit um, messy. And, and this is Excel again. It's, it's Excel. It's remarkable how this much this hasn't changed. Um, in Excel, you have far more icons at the top there to click on, just like today. Um, and it works absolutely fine. I mean, it's a spreadsheet. Okay, those of you who use your spreadsheets for far more complex things than I do, I will miss a lot of features, but I won't. Um, and P File Manager, the much missed File Manager. Go in and here we go. Um, this is the contents of the hard disk. There is 22 meg free of a 77 or 80 meg hard disk. Um, 16 meg of that um, was freed up by me deleting Visual Basic. Um, and all the files associated there, just because there, there was nothing, there was no space. Um, that and the other stuff on here, there's just a couple of meg free. Um, we've got a file here called Orbit. No idea what this is, so I'm going to click on it. Program loaded, subcontract updates program failed to connect to mainframe. All oh, this is a bit war games. Um, Orbit, please try again. Unable to establish a terminal session. Hmm, it needs, perhaps it needs that, that, it, the device did come with a PCMCIA modem. 
Um, so perhaps it uses that to connect to the mainframe. It's not liking this though. It's just not liking this at all. And everything seems to have ceased to work. Still, it hasn't crashed and it's Windows 3, so small mercies. And there's the Windows installation folder. Um, I'm wondering if this has had a few things uh, chopped out of it. I don't know. Just uh, there are a few things like paint that don't seem to be installed that I would have assumed should be there. And there we go. Windows 3.1 1992 registered to British Airways. And it seems to think as well we've got 17, we've got 14 meg free and 77% of that is free. So, uh, yeah, that's um, that's pretty good for a PC of this era. Although I suppose if you're doing development, you would have had a large amount of memory. Close windows. Oh, oh I bet you that's that Orbit program. Temple PL1 cannot quit. Uh, no, it's not going to do it, is it? It's going to... Yeah, it's using terminal, so I'm guessing that PCMCA card would be connecting to that mainframe, and that's what that's... all oh, general, we got a general protection fault! Woo! First one on the system, good old Windows 3, general protection faults. Hasn't taken the system down, though, so that's uh, something. Here we go, back out to DOS. And this is Indianapolis 500, which we saw earlier running on the screen, but this is what it looks like in colour on the VGA display. And look how fast and smooth this is. And remember when we played this on my Amstrad PC 2086 with NEC V30 processor? And look at the frame rate. This is fantastic. It's not the fastest 386 in the world, but it's throwing Indy 500 around superbly. Um, this is pretty much as fast and smooth as I guess you'd want it. And this is Flight Simulator 5. And again, it's not too bad. Um, you can turn all the detail on, at which point the entire thing does crawl to a halt. This is on a kind of medium detail setting. Flying from Meeks Field. And there's a decent update rate. Um, as I say, you don't want too much dynamic scenery and all the detail levels on. Because Flight Sim was always a little bit demanding. It does pretty well, and the the increased frame rate over the other systems I played it's on it helps you play the game, and you get all these external views as well, which play beautifully. Again, you know, the faster the PC you've got, the better. Um, at Flight Sim, we should always be playing on the high spec PC you can, but to see a laptop of the day running this well, it seems pretty good. And here's Afterburner, a game I reviewed last year. And uh, runs pretty well. No, it's okay. It's not the Mega Drive version, which is quite, quite superb. But running this in VGA looks good. Frame rate's perfectly acceptable. And again, Lemmings, another classic game. And using the little trackball controller, which works fantastically. Um, don't need an external, we can use an external mouse, but the trackball, um, it seems that uh, the system's picked it up and I'm happily using that, which is pretty good. And of course, we can run QBasic, which is on the system, and therefore I can run Gorillas, and this is the game you'd play in school because every school or college had QBasic on the system because it's part of DOS. And therefore, you played the built-in game, or one of the games that was an example, in QBasic, and you were two gorillas, and you hurl bananas at them, and each other, and you give an angle and speed, or velocity, and it creates a little explosion, the aim is to hit. So we've got Chinny versus Sir Clive Sinclair. Uh, perhaps he's uh, flinging Vegas back to him, although it looks like something else. So, um, well, uh, Vega would be, yeah, whatever. Um, so going for 70, velocity, or oh, let's go for 65. If you hit the sun, which I won't, but he, he's smiling and he would change expression. I'm going to hit him, I'm going to hit him. Oh, yay! Whoa, there you go. That's pretty good. 
and you get to beat your chest as well when you do that. And uh, in terms, of, it's back into Windows here to show you one more thing, and that is the uh, battery uh, management systems on here because this system has a fairly advanced battery management for the time. Looks very basic. We've got alerts for low battery and uh, resume as well. Save it all to disk, save states, um, and all sorts of options. You can also auto system performance as well to turn the processor down. So the Sharp PC 6700 um, certainly looked the solution to all my problems on Chini Vision because it's small, portable, I can put it away and I can bring it out and plug VGA into it to play games. It's got a 386 processor which is fast enough for most games pre-94. Um, it'll run Doom, not very well, but it will run it. Um, and certainly Doom 2 as well, it worked, but not very well. You're certainly looking, you'll need a 486, I think, if you want the more ambitious 3D games. But certainly, yeah, I think before 94, as I say, you're you're doing pretty well on this, especially if you've got a VGA monitor because you can just plug it in. It's small, it's portable. However, you've got to deal with that NICAD battery pack, and I don't know what I've managed to do to this unit to really mess it up. Because um, all I did was build a new NICAD battery pack, and it now doesn't want to play ball half the time. Um, it's a very well built unit. It is metal with plastic coating. The plastic coating is not disintegrated. There's connectivity, a 1.44 floppy, which means it's easy to get things in and out of. Sadly, um, a GoTech is probably out of the question because you're not going to get it in there unless you can find a half height one. Um, but it does have PCM CIA, which gives you all sorts of functionality, especially if you install a better operating system than Windows 3.11 and MS DOS on here. I think it's a really neat, small, and compact laptop that would have been very attractive back in the day. And today, if you're looking for some PC gaming and you have access to a VGA monitor, uh, which modern LCDs support VGA as well, then this could be a very compact and affordable way to do some PC gaming. The biggest problem, of course, is sound. Um, in, you can't get a sound card in here, so that's going to be a problem if sound is important to you. But if you're just looking for a few PC games, then I don't think you can really go far wrong at the cost these are selling for. They're certainly much, much cheaper than properly specced desktop machines of the same era.